Okay, <clears throat> this is a clock came to me as is right now. Some of the parts in here, and I've been asked to look it over and to do what needs to be done to put it back together. This is a clock made by the New England Clock Company. Uh, this one was made in 1967, it says. And it's an uh, interesting case. But if you look at the back of it, you see that it's actually a case built around the German cuckoo clock basic case. Uh, to take the bellows out, you really need to take this whole case the out. bellows can be taken off and the movement taken out and so forth. So we're going to just take a look at everything here. And I think we'll uh, start by uh, taking this case out and uh, removing that uh, cuckoo bellow because the top is broken off and the screw has been pulled out of this one. I think they thought maybe it was glued in. So we'll take, uh, take that out and uh, remove the screws. There's some screws here that are holding the inner case in. So all we really need to do is get a... Okay, let's see if these will fit. Okay, here we go. Take this screw out. Okay. Oh, well, they put some long screws in there. Okay. Okay, one there. There's one here. The Cuckoo Club Company, it is a case company. They're using existing German cases, or German movements and rough cases and then surrounding them with designer cases. So they're really cuckoo clock designers and uh, using Hubert Hare movements and Gotta take the outer movement off before you can remove the the uh, remove the bellows. And actually, if you're gonna remove the case, so there's one on the top, another screw here. Okay, and then. Uh, before I can get the case out, you got to get this hanger piece off too. It's keeping this case from sliding out. Alright, and then we can lift this case right out. And this then can be set aside. It's just a surround is all that is. Set that aside for now and I'll clean it later. What I'm seeing here now is you can see this is a that's a basic Kugel clock case. Because now once we get that outer case off, we can now get to the screws that hold the hold the bellows in. That one bellows was taken out, what it did was it is strip the hole, take that out, and we can leave that uh, the nail in. And this bellow needs to be taken out. Boy. So they must be ordering these cases like this with the Hubert Hare movement in 
and then putting the outer case on, the designer case. And okay, there we are, and that bellows had to had come off. All right, so there's that case. So they they're ordering this box with the movement and the bellows in, and then. Uh, putting their dial on it, surrounding it with their case and uh, the designer case, and selling them as uh, New England Clock Company. Okay, and this particular model is called the American Cuckoo Bird. Okay, so we can set that aside and we will deal with it later. Now we have to deal with a these couple of things. Here's the bellows for the, for the left side. Right side is going to have to go the same way, but we got to glue this back on. So we'll clean this up, glue this on, and set it aside to dry. Looks like rubber cement was used on it before. Okay, now we have to evaluate this uh, looking at it closely it looks like there's been a whole lot of bushings put in this uh, not real happy with the way this bushing looks that's sticking way proud of the plate in which case that could create, a, yeah, I can feel there's a roughness in there already. That could create a problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, disassemble this, check everything out. It's a Hubert Hare movement, um, and then reassemble this. And, uh, looks like it's been cleaned once. I don't know if it's been oiled or not. Kind of hard to tell. Uh, little rough spot there where a bushing was ground off. But we'll take this back apart and uh, reevaluate it. Yeah, one of the first things I notice is the center shaft is bent. That much. So we're going to have to straighten it. side in running with 1500 grams of weight runs for a little while and then it hangs up and what and now it's hanging up again and I'm seeing it's it's not clearing on this pallet over here that's the exit pallet Going around, so I've got to take that wheel out and I got to examine it very, very closely. Because I'm not yet, yeah, it's hanging up. So, uh, probably got some teeth that are not straight on it. All right, looking at the anchor, the pallets, and the teeth on the escape gear, everything looks fine right here but if this the end shake in these this anchor and the end shake in this escape gear are pretty excessive so if I push this all the way to the extreme this way this to the extreme this way they're doggone near coming undone so, uh, I got to do something about the end shake. The end shake on this one I can deal with. It looks like we might have some problems with these tabs, can be bent a little bit. 
it appears this one is sticking out this way just a little bit. We can take some of the end shake out of that anchor, keep it more this way. And then looking at that escape gear, when I look at the uh, when I look at this bushing down here, that's not out flush with the surface of the plate. And it's allowing the escape gear to move too far to the right. And with this moving that far, that's getting pretty close. Um, so we need to tighten that up a little bit. I think uh, part of what I can do is just replace replace this bushing so that it's now in all the way and the, the surface of the bushing is flush with the plate so that that can't shift quite as far. Remove some of it that way. All right. I closed the entry pallet just that I cleaned up the, the teeth on a couple little burrs and I closed the entry pallet just the tiniest bit just a tiny tiny bit and now everything is running smooth real smooth so I think we'll be okay on that I'll replace that uh, bushing on the escape wheel so that we don't have a problem with the that right now is running very very nicely here's the only thing I'm concerned about is this sliding over too far and the alignment of the this need to reduce the end shake so I need to reduce the end shake this way on this thing and we'll do that okay now I got that running real nice oh that runs smooth as silk now no hang ups Running all the way around. I didn't have to replace that bushing uh, for the escape gear. What I did was I just laid it flat on a plate and I tapped it in tighter so it's nice and flat. And all I had to do was drive the, the bushing flush to the inside. And now when we look here, um, if I move this you see the getting hold of the end shake now on that and on the escape wheel. We don't come. If I push the escape wheel as far as it'll go this way, and this as far as it'll go the other way. doesn't come anywhere near as close to the edge as it did before. There's the extent of the movement now. This a uh, problem with that. Yeah, that's going to run real good now. That's much better. And all it took was just uh, cleaning up the teeth, getting rid of a couple of burrs that I found, and then uh, just closing that, closing this pallet ever so slightly, so that by closing that, that allowed the exit pallet to clear the tooth. 
and not hang up on any teeth. So we should run okay now. Okay, we got it running. And everything seems to be working well that way. Now we can go from there. Okay, we've had it running now for three days. It hasn't stopped, so we're fine. <coughs> All of these have been cleaned, polished. Um, pivots polished. Plates cleaned up and polished. There's one, there's one uh, bushing that's uh, standing out from the... Bring that down some. Because what happens is uh, if the pivot doesn't come all the way through that thing, then the hole will not wear all the way through. It'll wear part way through and it'll end up uh, creating a rut and an otherwise round hole. And the arbor will eventually lose end shake and it will bind. So we gotta take that and just uh, grind it down and uh, cut out a, uh, a new heat or oil sink for it. There are the gears in place and ready for the back plate to go on. Okay, before we put all this stuff on the front, I want to go through now and oil all of these pivots. to them. Hi, Sonny. How are you, sweetie? Okay, been messing with this for quite a while trying to get the strike to work correctly. And what I found was somebody had really messed with this and just bent the living daylights out of some of these pieces. This piece right here, uh, right here, was bent way out of, out of whack. And, uh, so was the pin on the gathering pallet. For a while I thought maybe that wasn't the right gathering pallet, but I think I've got it now where it'll work. So we got, it's to the half hour, nothing happens. What'd I do? Okay, here comes uh, our rack drops. Rack wouldn't drop before. There it releases. Okay, it's striking the hour. Ah, my thumb slipped off. And I think I've got it now. Yeah, there it's stopped now. And yeah, okay. And that's on the hour. Uh, let's see what happens with a half hour. Okay, half hour works. Now let's go to the hour. It should be the 11 o'clock. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay. 
And now let's see if it goes half hour. Half hour works. Should come up on the hour. Oh, this is, should be 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, now let's see if I get set enough that it'll come back to the one o'clock. There's the half hour. And now we should hit the one o'clock. There it is. Very good. Okay. I'm done for a while. All I got to do is wait now. I had to order a chain because the owner only sent me one chain. I don't know if he has the other chain, but to put this back together, I've got to have both chains. So I ordered a new chain. It'll be here in a day or two. And then I can see about putting this all back together. Okay, this base case I cleaned up, and I cleaned the inside, and then I coated everything with a coat of 50% uh, uh, linseed oil, boiled linseed oil, and uh, mineral spirits. And that will keep the wood from flaking and making dust. And I uh, cleaned up the dial. And everything's nice and clean. We'll be ready to put the movement in it and test it and make sure it's okay. Uh, the outer shell, that case, did the same thing. I wiped it down with damp cloth. And then I coated it with boiled linseed oil and mineral spirits. And wiped it down. And then I... Uh, after I let it dry for a couple days. And then I uh, used paste wax on it to coat everything. And it's nice and clean and it's ready to go over the top when we get the movement inside the other case. And I finally got the chain that was missing. Got it in the mail. And the uh, colors are not going to be a exact match, but the is the right size and we'll have both. Okay, so now we're going to get the rest of this together and get it into the case. Okay. Thought we had everything ready to go back together. I uh, keep having problems with it. Not striking right, catching, hanging up. I kept messing with the pin on the gathering pallet because it was either too deep or it wouldn't work. All kinds of crazy stuff going on. Apparently this thing has been dropped at some time. Because uh, I finally found out if you look very carefully at this pin that the uh, rack goes on. Uh, it's just bent ever so slightly causing the rack to go over too far to the right and the teeth get meshed too deeply on the gathering pallet pin so I gotta straighten that up yeah it's leaning just the air yeah, there you can see it pretty well now how it's bent toward the left now so I've got to straighten that up a little bit, and then maybe we'll get this working right. And it looks like I'm going to have to take this all apart again. It's in fact, this post is actually loose. I can turn it a little bit, and it'll get somewhat tight, but then I move it another position, and it's loose as a goose. And it's... Uh, so it's, I'm going to have to take the plate off because and this isn't screwed in. This is, uh, this is pressed in and it's going to have, I'm going to have to take the plate off to, uh, to 
to tighten that. I may even have to uh, silver solder it. So, this turning out to be a bigger problem movement than I first thought. Okay, we got it back apart, and here's the problem. Uh, this had been a problem in the past, apparently, because closer inspection, I found uh, remnants of uh, what looks like uh, either lacquer or or um, super glue. But at any rate, I scraped out the junk out of there, and as you can see, this uh, this is loose. Okay. Um, looking at the back, it looks like maybe somebody tried to tighten it before. That's not original. I mean, if you look at one of the other posts, you'll see that, uh, like this one here, it's fairly clean. Uh, this one looks like it's been evidence here that it's been hit with a punch and evidence here it's been hit with a punch trying to tighten this up uh, so that's got to be retightened I'll mess with this a bit if I need to We'll take this whole thing out, and uh, I can just turn a new piece. See, this is just, that's certainly not the way it should be. It's not perpendicular to the plate. With it not being perpendicular to the plate, especially it's pushed a little bit this way. Let's see if I can see it this way. A little bit toward, toward the strike side. What was happening is it's allowing the whole it's allowing this whole rack then to move just slightly to the right. I mean, and it doesn't take much. And uh, moving slightly to the right enough that the pin on the gathering pallet was bottoming out in the teeth and when it bottoms out there of course that jams so we got to keep this straight and I think what they did to compensate for that because I thought this was kind of weird looking anyway is that the wire that's on the gathering pallet is a little bit longer than what I've seen on others and I think what they were doing was that they were bending the teeth, the bending the rack out a little bit, and then <clears throat> being able to bend the wire far enough inward that it no longer bottomed. And that's just kind of a <laughs> kind of a iffy sort of way to fix it. So if I need to, what I'll do is. Uh, this can't be tightened up right. I'll just get on the lathe, turn a new piece with a smaller end that I'll thread, and then uh, tap the hole. Then this can be screwed in, and uh, by screwing it in and putting some putting some Loctite on the threads, hold that in place and keep it. Uh, keep it in place where it should be. Anyway, we'll mess with that and I'll, I'll find a solution one way or another to getting this tight. Okay, I took the pin out. I cleaned it. I cleaned the hole real good. I put it back in and then I used a very sharp punch to peen around the outsides and that tightened it up pretty good. It's tight, but I want to make sure it's permanently tight. So. I cleaned the hole, cleaned the post, 
Now I'm going to put that in here. I'm going to put a little bit of flux on it, and I'm going to put a tiny piece of silver solder right next to that. I'm going to put some silver solder down in there to make sure it stays permanent. Okay, I think I got it now. Unbent pieces all over the place to where the pin on the gathering pallet is coming into the teeth smoothly, lifting the gathering pallet. The other part is falling into place, goes around again. I'm doing this all by hand, but okay, I think we got it where it's going to work now. Two more now. One. This last one should do it. That'll be the stopping. Okay, very good. Okay, let's see how this works now. Snail on yet. Okay, looks good. Occasionally, I found this thing making a clunking sound like it's the wrong size uh, chain sound it makes when the wrong size chain is in, but I think I found a design flaw in this movement. Uh, what ends up happening is right here uh, this wheel really this chain literally rubs on this uh, movement post and sometimes as this uh, these things come down let me just get this running so you can see what I'm talking about the chain literally can snag on the edge of that uh, that post. We can get it to work. A link catches on there and it's rubbing right over the top. That's causing a loss of loss of power as well. That's just plain a design flaw. So the chain is having to go around that that post right there see it twisting and occasionally one of those links will actually catch and then it uh, hangs up nothing I can do about that alright I'm putting this movement back in that basic uh, case and uh, probably might want to know that this is actually a replacement movement uh, because see here's an original hole here this original originally had uh, a different movement in it there's an extra hole here there's an extra hole here and uh, the others are okay, but yeah, this is a this is a replacement movement.
Okay, it's been test run now for a couple days, so pretty sure we're going to be okay. Just make sure it cuckoo's right. I'm going to move that arm. have to do is set that whole thing right down inside put the screws or two screws through the roof and uh, I can't remember where the other two the two screws through the bottom here that go in four screws that hold the whole movement in this is just a surround and we'll be done with it Okay, four screws are in. 